dear aspirants welcome back to our channel let's see the next topic that is methods for simplification of complex spectra already in the last video we discussed that first order nmr spectra and non first order nmr spectra right in generally in complex systems we will observe the complex spectra if you have the complex spectra it is very difficult to identify the chemical shift values that's why in order to get the proper chemical shift values what should we do we need to convert the complex spectra into simple spectra what are the methods which are useful for converting the complex spectra into simple spectra the first method is what field strength already we know that strength of the external magnetic field is directly proportional to the what precisional frequency this is directly proportional to the what delta chemical shift values are not so simply what we are doing we need to increase the field strength thereby precisional frequencies of the protons increases thereby chemical shift values are increased chemical shift values are increasing means what separation between the lines are increasing so separation increasing means complex spectra is converted into simple spectra very simple or not this is the first one the second important technique is decoupling double irradiation or double resonance it's very very important in order to convert the complex spectra into a simple spectra we have the second method commonly called as decoupling technique or double irradiation technique or double resonance technique so generally what happens if you consider the proton nmr systems in case of any chemical system we are observing spin spin coupling during the spin spin coupling what happens initially assume this is the hypothetical molecule right in the hypothetical molecule initially we have observed one signal for the ha proton and one signal for the hb proton so because of the spin spin coupling the ha proton influenced by the spin of hb the hb proton influenced by the spin of ha because of that reason the ha is going to give two lines the hb is going to give two lines in the spectra it means this phenomena is commonly called as what splitting or not appearance of the proton nmr signal with more than one line is commonly called as splitting so because of the splitting phenomena we are getting more lines in the spectra or not so if you want to reduce the number of lines what should we do what should we do we should not observe the splitting pattern right but is it possible directly it is not possible why because in the molecule the influence is there directly the things are takes place that's why what should we do we need to eliminate the splitting process we need to eliminate the coupling process so in order to remove the spin spin coupling the technique which we are using is commonly called as a decoupling double irradiation or double resonance if there is no coupling what happens only single lines will appear with this molecule so the spectra will become simple or not so the complex spectra is going to converted into simple spectra by restricting the spin spin coupling between the adjacent nucleus that phenomena is commonly called as decoupling see this one elimination of splitting pattern by preventing the interaction of the nuclei called as double irradiation or double resonance so what should we do what is the double resonance process so what is the resonance which we have discussed what is the resonance whenever you send the radio frequency radiation what happens at one time the frequency of the radio wave is going to be equal to the precisional frequency of the proton then you will get the signal that is what resonance here what we are doing double resonance see this one under this condition what is happening the ha may going to identify the upper spin of the hb or 
it is going to identify the downward spin of the HB. If the HA identify the upward spin, then we will get one signal. If HA identify the downward spin, you will get the another signal. That's why dou two doublets we are getting. So now what we should do? We need to eliminate the coupling. We need to eliminate it. So how can we eliminate? See, if the upward spin and downward spin of the HB is recognized by the HA, then only splitting pattern takes place or not. Okay. Now, what is the criteria? We need to eliminate this coupling. HA should not recognize the new spin of the HB. HB should not recognize the spin of HA. That we need to create. So, in order to create such phenomena, what we are doing, we are sending one second radiation. We are irradiating the we are irradiating the HB with the second radiation. What is the use of the second radiation? The second radiation is always helpful for the flipping of the spin of the HB. What is the use? It is always convert the spin of the HB into directly up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Continuously, the spin of HB is doing like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. We are not giving any time. Continuously, that is in the up and down moment. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Continuously, HB spin is going to be present. So, if the spin of the HB is continuously in that position, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down position, then HA will not recognize the spin of HB. If the HA will not recognize the spin of HB, what happens? There is no coupling between HA and HB. So, you will get what? Only one signal. So, what happens? The complex spectra converted into simple spectra. So, here we have used two radiations or not? One radiation is useful for the absorption of the sample. Another radiation is only for the flipping of the second nucleus. What is the second radiation use? Simply the nucleus spin is going to be in the continuous motion up down up down up down up down That's why we are calling it as a double resonance Resonance phenomena takes place from one side and also we are using another radiation That's why it is commonly called as a double resonance phenomenon. So double resonance technique is useful for the conversion of complex spectra into simple spectra Okay, next Using contact shift reagents or lanthanide shift reagents. In the presence of shifting reagents, increases the shifting between the signals. Generally, what the people are saying, suppose assume that this is the spectra of a molecule. So, later what the people have done, to the compound, one reagent is added, then re recorded the spectra. Thereby, what they have observed, the separation is increased. Why the separation is increased? That we will discuss. Here the people are using uh, europium complexes. Europium 3 ion complexes. EU DPM thrice. EU FOD thrice. DPM means dipival oil. Pival oil means this is the group. Methyl, 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 CC double bond. Dipival oil means how many groups should be present. Two groups are not. See this. This is one group. This is another. Two groups are connected to CH2. Now this is... Uh, converted into the enol form. Here we have a proton or not? So the proton is involving in the resonance. That's why it is converted into what? CH double bond, C double bond. So this form is going to treated with europium 3 ion. Thereby we will get this complex. Europium DPM 3 complex. Similarly, in case of the second FOD, FOD means what? Hexafluoro octane dione. 
hexafluorooctane diode see this one what is the difference cme3 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 c double bond like na here what happens cme3 cme3 we have not disturbed here the cme3 one of the cme3 is converted into cf2 cf2 ch3 cf3 cf2 cf2 cf3 it will become what c3f7 so hexafluorooctane diode see this one c double bond o c double bond o we have removed completely this one we have added cf2 cf2 cf3 so hexafluorooctane diode we are getting this kind of complex so these two europium complexes are generally used in this purpose so what is the condition when we are using this one it should be paramagnetic in nature should be soluble in all nmr solvents should double up coordination with the substrate whatever the compound you have in your hand the compound should be coordinate with what your complex then only the signal separation takes place see this one europium is the metal having the plus 3 charge plus 3 charge means europium is electron deficient or not that's why your substrate should be electron rich so what are the electron rich species in the organic chemistry alcohols amines halides and carboxylate ions so these lone pair of electrons are donated to what europium so if you talk about the oh proton signal what happens in this one at the oxygen the lone pair is donating to the europium right so at the oxygen electron density is decreasing or not so at the oxygen electron density decreasing means these bonding electrons move towards oxygen or not why because oxygen electron deficient it wants electron that's why what happens these bonding electrons move towards the oxygen it means at the hydrogen the electron density is decreased or not the electron density decreased means net field is going to be increased positional frequency is going to be increased thereby delta chemical shift values are increased so a delta chemical shift values are increased means the separation between the signals takes place or not so complex spectra is converted into simple spectra in case of this molecule these reagents are commonly called as what lanthanide shift reagents generally these reagents were used in 1860s but nowadays because of its complexity people are not using why because we have ft nmr four year transform nmr technique because of that technique we need not to use that one and also we are having double resonance techniques right so it is not the popular technique the usage of the lanthanide shift reagents or the shifting reagents is not going to be valid not okay so let's see the hydrogen bonding proton nmr we have two types of hydrogen bonding or not intermolecular hydrogen bonding and intramolecular hydrogen bonding intermolecular means between the two molecules intra means within a molecule see this one the strength of intermolecular hydrogen bonding depending upon the concentration or dilution of the sample strength of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding depending upon the concern concentration increases means strength of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding increases so strength of the intermolecular hydrogen bonding increases means positional frequency increases or not right intramolecular hydrogen bonding strength is independent only within the molecule that's why if you change the concentration of the sample the, within the molecule similar situation takes place now in case of inter what is happening more than one molecule are going to be involved in the situation that's why that is the concentration dependent so intramolecular hydrogen bonding is concentration independent so you have one spectra right in that spectra if you want to identify the presence of intermolecular and intramolecular hydrogen bonding how can we identify it? that is the question 
so we need to use simply this concept so you have one molecule you have the spectra of that molecule right so take the molecule okay record the spectra of the molecule with 0.1 molar record the spectra of the molecule with 0.01 molar record the spectra with 0.001 molar right by decreasing the concentration what happens the strength of the hydrogen bonding is going to be decreased or not if the hydrogen bond strength is decreasing thereby what happens chemical shift value is going to be decreased or not so for the molecule if you record the spectra with different concentrations if the chemical shift values are changing then we can say that the intermolecular hydrogen bonding is present you are going to record the spectra with different concentrations but the chemical shift values are not changing then we can say that that is intramolecular hydrogen bonding so in this way we can identify inter and intramolecular hydrogen bonding in the molecule okay so how the inter and intramolecular hydrogen bonding is going to identified in the proton nmr spectra okay so in the next video we will be discussing about proton exchanges in proton nmr thank you